972-4000. Plus, you can get additional information by logging on to the website at www.jonesproperties.biz. Jones Properties is also looking to invest in properties. So if you have a property that you need to sell, call the professional team at Jones Properties first. They'll help you find the perfect property for whatever your needs. Call today, 472-4000. And don't forget to keep up with Jones Properties on Facebook. You're listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson on Whoop FM. Call 423-614-5553 to join in on the conversation. Now, back to Backfire. Hey, good morning. We're back again. We've got a special guest in the studio with us that, uh, if you're just now tuning in with us, uh, Miss Emily, oh, golly, I've lost all my notes. Emily. Baby. Baby. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Oh, my goodness, I didn't even get to talk before the phone started ringing. I was going to say something here. Uh, Go ahead and let's take a call there and let's see if we got bets on this call. Go ahead. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. How are you? I said, old Emily, uh, I've known her about 30 years, I think. Uh, She has got the most lovable bulldogs I've ever seen in my life. Oh, this must be Robert, or Bullet, I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, But uh, I just wondered how your your little baby's getting along with those bulldogs. Oh, she's doing just fine. She's she's adjusting well, and they seem to adjust to her, so they're doing well. I'll tell you what, you have got your. Uh, I, I bet your I bet your mom and dad spoiled that little baby rotten. Yes, they have. They have her right now, and they're probably giving her Coke in a bottle and <laughs> candy, and yeah, giving her a lollipop or something already. I got, yes. I got one last question. I like for you to come on if you don't, uh, come, come in on if you don't care. We'll do our best. I, I heard that they're going to start uh, giving drug tests for people on disability and stuff like that. And uh, my my opinion about that is fine, but I think everybody that ever, uh, if they start doing that, everybody should tell them what they're on because uh, some, some of your medications could give you effect of that too also. And uh, uh, I just want to hang up now and listen to what you're going to say about that. So you're saying, okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, the question was... Um, uh, he's heard that they're going to start giving drug tests, uh, I guess, for people that are drawing some kind of welfare or something. Well, I think he's talking about Social Security disability. Okay, Social Security disability. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it lately. Uh, have you heard anything about it? I have not heard that particular. Uh, no, I haven't lately. Mm-hmm. But anyway, what's your opinion of the idea? Well, I, I think that we need to use taxpayer money wisely. And if we have someone who uh, is getting benefits from the government, they should not be using illegal substances and misusing taxpayer money to fund those habits. So I think it is a good thing. Franklin, your opinion? I guess the concept's okay. It's uh, it's a little more problematic than that. People on Social Security are getting federal benefits. Or, or we're going to take those away if they drink too much or whatever i don't know uh, yeah I, I just think i just think uh, uh you know in an ideal world you could solve all those problems i'm not sure you can uh for individuals who otherwise meet the legal definitions of what they're getting sure i just think it would be a start i mean disability is supposed to be i mean it's supposed to be for individuals who are unable to work um, uh, beyond that i'm not sure what the relevance is uh, so if they're taking other drugs and so forth, that doesn't have uh, anything would, to do with their disabilities, what you're saying? Presumably. But, I mean, I'm just saying there's no difference for them than anybody else. I mean, if they're violating the law, they're subject to being prosecuted for violating the law. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're buying illegal drugs, you can be sent to jail for that, whether you're on disability or not. Sure. Let's take a call. Go ahead, caller. You're live. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Who we got? This is Brett. Hey, Brett. How are you? Good. Who won the game last night? Uh, Atlanta won yesterday, uh, seven seven to six yesterday. Good. Who are they playing today? The same team. Ah, you think they can do it two days in a row? Yeah. All right, buddy. What's your prediction, Brett? Do what? What's your score prediction? I hope Atlanta wins. But what what do you think the score is going to be? Four to three. Four to three. Okay, Brett. I, uh, somebody's celebrating a birthday tomorrow. Who? Uh, me. 
Me. Me. Oh, happy, happy birthday. birthday happy birthday to Brett. All right, Brett. Celebrating a birthday tomorrow. All right. Well, I'm going to tell your uh, buddy on Thursday and Friday show to really blow up that you've had another birthday. I'm going to be in the studio tomorrow. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. All right, Brett. Well, I'll listen. I promise. All right. Thanks, Brett. How you too? All right. Uh, anyway, I was going to say, uh, I, I've been in Washington uh, this week, and I, I certainly had a great time in Washington. I went up there to the Memorial, Memorial Parade, and, you know, they had the concert in the park and, and, uh, and uh, some of these type of things, but uh, uh, enjoyed uh, my trip there and uh, uh, really uh, saw a lot of things going on. One of the things that was kind of interesting to me was all the political newspapers in Washington D.C. I mean, you come to a uh, you come to a red light. There's a row. There's seven or eight boxes of paper, newspapers on this side, and then over here on the other side, there's another row of seven or eight um, newspapers. I mean, everywhere you go, there's political newspapers in Washington D.C. It's amazing to me. Uh, well, there's not a lot of industry there i mean that that is the industry <laughs> right. in dc what uh, newspapers <laughs> Pol politics. politics i think it's newspapers <laughs> they could heat their homes at washington dc with the newspaper uh. they've got let's they, go ahead and take they a like call. to read and talk about themselves i think a lot too uh let's That's take a true. call go ahead caller you're live morning people um i, I had a question you know when uh and your guests had uh emily had uh made a statement about tax dollars and and uh, uh, something about transparency, you know, but that's not just a national issue. That's also a local issue that that uh, we seem to have problems with. Um, I, uh, I, I kind of, I guess I can pose this as a question, you know, uh, if you, uh, if someone wanted to gain access to, uh, you know, uh, Documents that had uh, that dealt with the budgets and stuff like that from an elected board, and then those elected boards stonewalled uh, the release of those documents of for an unrealistic period of time. Are you saying what's going on now, basically? Absolute, absolutely. Okay. All right. Absolutely. So we're talking about they've been stalling the five hundred one uh, from getting uh, um, approved and so forth. Stonewalling. No, no, actually, I'm ta actually I'm talking about the actually I'm talking about the you know the school board here that uh, doesn't want to release documents dealing with the budget and stuff and these are these are in the public domain and this is uh, information that should be available to the taxpayer and uh, you know uh, you can't access these things because you ha you get the absolute runaround. This stuff should be readily available to any citizen who wants to look at the budget and the how tax money is spent. That's public. That's public information, isn't it, Dan? Well, there's public a information, absolutely. Well, are you having a hard time getting it? Uh, absolutely. Who have you tried to get it from? I'm sorry. You've tried to get budget information from the school boards, county or city? Uh, no, county. County, and you can't get it. Um, the first. Uh, the first information I had to actually access was given to me. I couldn't get it through the office. Uh, they seem to uh, they seem to want to uh, put you off, put you off, put you off. And then I actually did get the first uh, bit of information that I was looking for uh, through a school board member mm -hmm. who finally had to step in and intervene. And then uh, the second group of documents that we've been asking for that pertain to money that has been spent and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to ascertain whether that is a legitimate expense uh, we haven't been able to obtain, and it's been going on for an extended period of time. And I, I hate to file a Freedom of Information Act against a local board like this, but I mean, you know, especially elected. That's what it's there for. A representative board, which it doesn't appear to be. You know, I read an article um, uh, a month or so ago, I, I think. I can't remember when it was, but it was in the banner. And it was written um, about the Bradley County school budget. And I thought it was really written well, and uh, it really explained in detail, I thought, a lot more um, 
than I've ever seen before this year. So I thought they tried to really do a good job of explaining where the money was going and and uh, how it was going to be spent. So anyway, uh, what is your issues? What do you think there's a problem with, Dan? I know you're trying to get the budget. What's the issues? What's the problem? Well, you know, understand, Steve, that a budget is just a projection. Sure. A budget is an estimate. You know? Sure. So I, I want, I, I don't a budget is what you live by. Right. Well, the well, the budget is an estimate. So what I'm looking for is the actual money, monies that haven't been spent and how they were spent. I don't want the budget. I want the actual, uh, hmm. actual spending. So you're wanting to compare the spending to the budget. Yes, and, and, and I mean budgets. Are, budgets can be very deceptive because there can be, you know, uh, there can be items that are shifted around. And sure, every company does way. it. Right, and, and so I just we're just trying to access uh, money that has been spent and money that has been paid. Who's out. we? Who's we, Dan? Our group, our uh, Tea Party group. Tea Party group, okay. And uh, you know, I just think that if it's public information, you know, I just think it looks bad on a governing body on someone who's elected to give someone a runaround when this is public information. You should be able to go in, request, make a document request. And receive it within, you know, three or four days, a reasonable amount of time. I'm not, I don't want 500 pages of paperwork. I'm not looking for naval secrets. I just want, you know, uh, I, we want these documents so we can see if what's, what we're being told is what is actually going on. And I just, I just think it's a shame that you have to go to this, uh, to these degrees to be able to attain this type of document. Today. Go ahead, Emma. Well, and, and Dan, um, I, I wanted to say too, and, and I said this at the beginning of the program, my mother is on the county school board. I don't know exactly what you're referring to. We try to not talk about a lot of these things, so I don't know exactly what situation you're referring to, but you are correct. You should be able to get that information. I don't know, are you, uh, request, are you requesting it from a certain from a certain um, office or well, I went to the, we we went to the school board to the office and requested and we're told that 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 information had to come from uh, a different from a, a party within it within that uh, board uh, within the uh, office and then at over a week and a half or two weeks later when we went back because no one called back about it we're told that that had to come from the head of the school of the uh, of the office and that we would have to come back at a later date well why first thing is why does it have to come from the head this is public information and, and also i do know your mother and i've talked to her before uh, sure. but uh i just think that i just think that this is a runaround now maybe this is the way the business has been done have you put it in writing down and presented it oh, to abso- the, oh absolutely to the school board absolutely and and you still yeah. hadn't gotten a response after you put it in writing <laughs> No. Well, and, and I think there needs to be a distinction, too, because I, I don't know. I, I'm trying to piece together what you're saying, Dan. And like I said, I really don't know exactly what you're talking about. But there is a difference, too, in the school board versus um, the central office staff. And if you're going there to receive information, I don't know. Have the school board members, do they have the information that you should, that you can be? You know what? They, the last, the last the last um, information that I received I, that I requested from the office, not from the board members, had to. I had to that information. I finally had to go to a board member to obtain the information. Mm-hmm. And this is going. Looks like this may ha- go down the same path. But this is information that you should be able to go to the desk. You should. You should uh, issue your written request, what? and that documentation should come forward in a relatively short period of time. When it does. It makes it appear as if there is some impropriety and that somebody's trying to hide something. And when you constantly get shifted, from, well, you got to get it from this guy, and then you got to get it from this guy, and then you got to get it. The problem with that is, is it makes it appear as if there's something to hide. And that is not a good thing. And I mean, I just hate, you know, I just think it's, it's a bad precedent to set. And maybe that's the way business has been done you know, over the last 20 years or whatever, but that's not the way business should be done. All right, Dan, we hope you get to the bottom of it, and uh, maybe they'll hear something and send you some uh, a package right away. Yes. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyway, you know, I think that uh, if something's submitted in writing and given a, 
a general term, and I would think that you should be able to receive that within 30, 45 days. Oh, I think we would all agree with that. Sure. All right. So now, school board, if that's not happening, please make that happen so Dan can stop talking about that. Yes. Let's go ahead and I take agree. another call. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Doball. Hey, Red. They're talking about drug testing, these people that are on disability. Yeah. I think they should. All right, Red. I know a lot of people that are on disability that don't need it. They drink. Mm-hmm. They do drugs. There's not a blame thing wrong with them. They need to get a job. How do you think those people got qualified to get on disability, They Red? get a lawyer and get on there. <laughs> And I know people that live in beautiful homes that is on disability that absolutely don't need it. Well, it's uh, time we tighten our belt around America, that's for sure. As a matter of fact, I know one woman that drawed her money out of the bank so she could get on it. So she could what? She oh. get on disability. Oh, I see. She took her money out of the bank. Well, you know, um, America's supposed to be tightening their belt right now, and it doesn't seem like there's enough going on. Right there. All right, Red. Thanks for your comments. You know, uh, that is one of the things that's uh, been criticized recently is America's not cutting back. They're not making the cuts, the budget cuts as needed. Uh, You know, there's just not enough. There's a lot of wasted spending in government and that we're not doing enough to try to cut that. Uh, There's, uh, you know, you've got... um, homeland security issues there's companies spun out of homeland security and and uh, reaping off the money that they've got to spend right now you know i i witnessed this personally one day here at the village when a homeland security officer needed to meet me immediately i mean i was at lunch and uh, he he wanted to meet me immediately and i said well tell him i'm busy anyway he comes over here gets on the phone and calls me direct and uh, when I got down here, he wanted to know what size the what the wattage was in the light bulbs around the Social Security office here. I said, "Now wait a minute, are you serious? I mean, this guy's got a badge. He's got uh, uh, this important car. He's got uh, the computers in there. And of course, if I'd said anything to him the wrong way, he had the right to uh, uh, take me in also. So it was absolutely amazing to me. And this guy taking your case." Though. Huh? I'd have taken your case. <laughs> well, I mean, he and come to find out, he had made two or three trips up here, and is sat in the parking lot at night, and sat and drew a map of the of parking lot lights, and then uh, he had taken uh, some kind of a meter and read the lighting, and then he needed to know what size the what the, the uh, what type light bulbs were in the lights and what the uh, wattage of them was. I told him, I said, I don't have a clue, and he said, Well, you do, you mean you don't have a lighting diagram? I said, well, listen, when we built this building, we uh, had an architect draw it up, <clears throat> and they submitted them. And I said, GSA approved this building. Can you not go back to the blueprints of where this building was originally built and come up with the specs that was there? Well, uh, no, uh, no. Uh, do you not have, uh, do you, is there no way you can provide this? And I said, well, you, you know, I'm... I said, my lighting guy's on vacation this week. He's the guy that really replaces them when they burn out. I said, he could probably tell you, but he's on vacation this week. I said, you didn't call and give me any warning. You just showed up. He said, well, I've got to get this information today. Anyway, make a long story short, I made a, a educated guess at the deals for him. He told me not to tell anybody. He wrote that down in his report and left. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely, I mean, if we've got money to blow like this, it's right. absolutely crazy. Well, and then there was a big story this weekend about uh, the VA and the struggles there. Um, some people are having to wait sure. 25 months and for critical for care benef- issues, benefits. for benefits, and that's, there's just no ab- excuse. That's crazy. That is no excuse for that. You're exactly right. There's no excuse for that. Anyway, the benefits should be, um, if anything should be uh, sure. speeded up and, and put on a fast track, something like that should be. Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, but... You know, a government, there is so much waste that we could go through and easily clean up. I believe Franklin would even agree there's a lot of waste in government that we could go through there and probably take the broom and sweep it and uh, get rid of a lot of spending. Uh, I had some articles here a little bit ago, but I can't find them now in all my mess of uh, 
some of the things that they were talking about in the cuts. But uh, anyway, we'll get into that next week. Um, well, what did you think about uh, Bob Dole's comments this week? I didn't hear it. What, what did well, he say? He was interviewed on Fox News this past Sunday, and he said that uh, the Republican Party was broken uh, and that neither he nor Ronald Reagan nor Richard Nixon could have succeeded in this Republican Party. Well, you know— uh, I'm just curious what you think about well, that. Well, I, <laughs> I think he's got a lot of right in what he said because I, I hate to say this, but I think the Tea Party is making it worse on the Republican Party. I think that they need to get together and try to work together in some of these issues. I think the Tea Party and the Republicans fussing and fighting with the, the conservative Republicans fussing and fighting with each other is hurting the party. Well, I mean, I noticed uh, the, the Times Free Press this week had an editorial uh, basically saying that uh, Lamar Alexander didn't deserve to be a Republican because he was too liberal. Um well, and, and, and let me, yeah, I, I don't, let me say this. I, Bob Dole also gave the advice that we should put a, for a closed sign, <laughs> closed for National repairs committee. for the National Committee, yeah. closed for repairs, and you mm -hmm. know, for the next six months. I, that's not going to happen, of course. That's not something that we need to be doing. I, I think part of the thing that's happening right now is healthy. We need to have this discussion I disagree with you about the Tea Party. I think that I don't think that they're destroying our party, but we have got to get to a Join. point. We've got to get united. We've got to get to a point where it's okay that we disagree about some issues and that we're not always fighting about, well, you're not really a conservative Republican if you disagree with me on this one issue. If we can come together and say we agree 95% of the time, Let's get together and let's do the things that we do agree on. I, I just think this is part of the process. Democrats have gone through this infighting before, too. When you lose a couple of presidential elections, it's just part of a healthy cleansing of the party. And it's okay. It's going to happen. I have full confidence that we are going to be able to pull together for the next presidential election, and we're going to get this back together. I, I, I just, I really don't think that we're in the peril that some people think we are. Emily just really set forth what I think is the the um, fundamental difference between the two parties. Now, uh, Democrats have a very big tent approach. Mm -hmm. They bring a lot of diverse groups in under the fold but once they're in, elected that becomes difficult because you have a lot of competing interests that you're trying to to deal with at that sure. point republicans have taken a sort of an insular for lack of a better word kind of checklist approach to what it is to be a republican and that has resulted in the exclusion of a lot of folks now getting in office that makes governing in some ways easier because the decisions are easier. Sure. But those are really what I see is the big differences between here's the a, two uh, parties right here's now. Here's something that was in one of the Politico newspapers out of Washington. It's talking about Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell gestures during a news conference on Capitol Hill on Tuesday after the Republican Party luncheon. The GOP budget negotiations have put him in an increasingly awkward spot as he must choose between Senators John McCain and Ted Cruz, who could very well run for president in 2016 and ending um, a feud that is causing an unwelcome distraction for his party. So, you know, it's putting some some uh, issues out there and uh, well i don't know if you remember but uh, you, i'm sure franklin you probably do a few weeks ago they came out with the big report about what we should do to bring the party back together we it was i think mm -hmm. i want to say it was 300 and something pages mm -hmm. i read through the first 12 pages which was the summary and it it's really you know i, I understand the big 10 approach to a certain extent, but some of the things that they were wanting to do is, oh, we've got to have this certain type of minorities in the party, and we've got to do this to target. We don't need to do that. We need to worry about our message. I think that's the problem that the Republican Party has had as of late, is we're not communicating our message. It's not the message itself. We're just not communicating our message to the public in the correct way. Okay. Uh, we've got to end it up here in just a second, but I wanted to, there was a couple of things I want to cover real quick. Uh, I think this Friday is one of the days that uh, some of the uh, 
IRS and EPA and HUD and some of these other groups are going to have to have a day off because of the sequester. Do you think that we will survive this, uh, Franklin? <laughs> Do you think that we can actually have the IRS, EPA, and HUD and some of the other uh, groups be able to t take just a day off without pay and us still be able to survive this? Well, we can only hope. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, I believe they can all just shut down and we wouldn't miss them at all. Uh, IRS is in big trouble right now, aren't they, Franklin? The IRS is in big trouble? Yeah. Investigations? Uh, I, I don't know that their uh, popularity's ever been particularly high. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I think some people are certainly uh, feeling some heat right now. Um, what about uh, Lois Lerner? Is she going to be oh, placed on administrative leave and not going to uh, um, speak to anyone? What do you think? Well, I don't blame her for not speaking to anyone in light of the comments that were made. You know, this is one of the things that I've talked about sometimes is that the rhetoric gets out ahead of where we are on it. She's not we speaking should, because she thinks that uh, well, because there's the people wanting to come. Uh, no, the committee that she was going in front of right, to testify, right, okay, right. the congressman the day before she got there said, I want to know who's going to jail for this. Right. Well, that does not scream out, come in and tell right. us what now the then, facts are. Now then, she is, uh, on the other side, she's pleading the Fifth Amendment on this. That's but, what I'm saying. That's but why the she, first thing she did is she came out and said she didn't do anything, which is opening the floodgate again mm -hmm. for them to come back after her. So what's your Possibly. opinion on that? Well, the legal issue is whether or not she waived her Fifth Amendment privileges by making that statement. But did it's, she? You're an attorney. It's not clear because it doesn't. Uh, it's not clear if she was under oath when she made the statement. Well, it wasn't, wasn't was she very... set? Was she standing or setting? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I bet you you could figure out whether she had been sworn in. Or, uh, the no, <laughs> so, no. Sometimes, sometimes the the people come before the committee. They make a statement and then they're sworn in. Yeah. I don't know what happened in this particular case, but that's where some of the legal distinctions she didn't right. have a very good attorney advising her about that statement did she <laughs> what was that guy's name he's he, he's gotten big representing some divorce cases or something <laughs> 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 anyway uh that's all for this week i guess uh uh thank you emily for coming in this morning oh, Bill, for john. Had, a, had a great time all right then hope you'll come back sometime sure all I'm right. glad to. send we, john on vacation more hey, often hey <laughs> hey we need we need somebody to help keep uh, Franklin in line, and it, you keep seem to keep him calm and quiet today. Thank well, you. would you please ring that bell because see, yeah, okay. John would be upset <laughs> if it wasn't at least hey, John, one time. I hope you're listening. Bye bye now. All right, See bye -bye. you next week. You've been listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson, John Stanberry, and Franklin Chancy. Catch them again on Whoop FM.